All right, this video is all about the big show. This entire chapter has been building up to the concept of stoichiometry, a mathematical calculation that allowed us, allows us to predict the outcome of a chemical reaction before we actually perform it. We'll start with a quick overview of what's about to happen. We'll do a little review in the beginning. Uh, the law of conservation of matter and the ability to balance chemical reactions are a big part of what stoichiometry is all about, so we'll go over those very quickly. We'll then define what stoichiometry actually is, a little more formally than I think we talked about it. Uh, all of the math in stoichiometry hinges around something known as the mole-to-mole -mole ratio. Uh, we'll talk about what that is and how it's used in the mathematics. Um, because these ca calculations can be a little bit complex, we'll talk about a flow chart to help organize some of your ideas. Uh, unfortunately, these flow charts come in a lot of different flavors and varieties, some of which are overly complicated, such as this one here. I found one that I believe is a good example of what will be helpful for you guys to work on things, uh, and we'll have an opportunity for you guys to download that. Last but not least, uh, kind of scattered throughout the sheet here, we'll do a little bit of practice to make sure that you guys have the opportunity to at least get your feet wet with some stoichiometry calculations. Uh, we'll definitely be doing a lot more of these in class and throughout the year. So we'll begin our discussion here with a quick review of some ideas you should already be fairly comfortable with. Um, the first of which is going to be the law of conservation of matter. And that is that matter is never created or destroyed. And we'll focus on the word never here. Never created or destroyed. All atoms must be accounted for on both sides of a chemical reaction. The type of atom and the quantity. And that also means the total masses must be accounted for on both sides of a chemical reaction. Where that plays an important role for us is in the role of a balanced chemical reaction. When we go to balanced chemical reactions, we do things like take inventories. For example, we start with one sodium atom and we start with two chlorine atoms. We end with one sodium atom and we end with only one chlorine atom. This is an example of a reaction that is not conserving matter because we don't have the same numbers on both sides. This reaction is therefore impossible. What we do then is we put in coefficients before each chemical in order to say that multiple of certain chemicals react until this inventory of atoms matches. And in this case, those coefficients are going to be two sodiums reacts with one molecule of chlorine, that changes our count here to two, to create two sodium chlorides. And we get two of these, and we get two of these, and now our inventories match. So the law of conservation of matter forces us to balance chemical reactions, and it's also going to be the underlying concept of why stoichiometry mathematics are going to work for us. So let's dive in right into the main topic then. What is stoichiometry? And as this first bullet points out, it is a calculation that predicts the amount of product formed in a chemical reaction, and that's going to be based on two main factors. The first of these main factors is the balanced chemical reaction itself. This balanced chemical reaction is going to act like a recipe in the fact that it's going to tell us how many of each chemical is necessary for the reaction to occur. The second major thing a stoichiometry calculation is based on is the amount of actual reactant used. And this is akin to talking about something like, for the example, the amount of ingredients used in a recipe. If I double or triple the ingredients in the recipe, I would expect to double or triple the outcome. I'd get twice as many cookies as if I used the regular recipe itself. So the recipe, or the balanced chemical reaction, tells us the rate the chemicals are being used at, and the amount of ingredients used gives us an idea of how many times we'll be able to perform this recipe to determine the amount of products. All of this is going to funnel into a chemical equation, or, or sorry, a mathematical calculation that's going to look similar to what we have going on here. Now, at first glance, this might look a little bit complicated, but what you need to recognize is that all of these are just individual conversion steps, and this is really a form of dimensional analysis the unit conversion method we talked about earlier in the year. This first one here is basically just a mole conversion. This second guy here is new and unique to stoichiometry, and you can already tell it comes from the balanced chemical reaction shown up above. And then this guy over here is just another mole conversion. So while at first glance this might be tricky, um, what you're really seeing here is just a dimensional analysis problem with some conversions that we're already familiar with, and we're going to add in a new conversion here um, for, to include our balanced chemical reaction.
So as we've already said, the idea of stoichiometry really hinges on this idea of law of conservation of matter, which is expressed in the form of a balanced chemical reaction. And we can actually get information out of the balanced chemical reaction right here to already start doing some very, very basic stoichiometry, some predicting of the outcome of the reaction based on the amount of materials we start with. As an example, if I react two molecules of the CH4 in this chemical reaction of above, so here's our CH4, we can already predict based on the chemical reactions what we would expect to get out. For example, because there is a one to one ratio here, the balances, of the coefficients of our balanced reaction are one in both case. For every one molecule of CH4 we get, we're going to get one molecule of CH2, CO2. So two molecules of CH4 then are going to produce for us two molecules of carbon dioxide. Likewise, if I start with one or two molecules of CH4, it's a one to two ratio with water, meaning we get two water molecules for every one CH4. Therefore, if I start with two uh, CH4 molecules, I would expect to get four molecules of water out. And we've basically done some simple stoichiometry here. We predicted the products of the reaction based on the balanced chemical reaction and based on the amount of material that we start with. Stoichiometry. We can also do the same type of logical reasoning with the oxygen molecules. If I react two molecules of O2, I would expect to get one molecule of CO2 because it's a two to one ratio. It takes two oxygens to make one carbon dioxide. Uh, and likewise, I would expect to get two waters. It's a one to one ratio or two to two ratio. For every two molecules of oxygen I start with, I get two molecules of water. So we'll only expect to get two water molecules. So as I said, we're able to create these predictions based on the idea from the balanced chemical reactions. And what we're about to get into next is that these numbers here, I'll take it back, uh, and these numbers here are going to create things we're going to call ratios. And we're going to use these ratios to do these predictions when situations are a little more complex. Now before we get into the ratios themselves, uh, what I also want you to notice is the fact that we can also talk about these not in terms of just molecules, but in terms of moles of molecules. Uh, because a mole is a consistent number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, the ratios we're dealing with actually end up staying the same. Notice these numbers didn't change at all. The reason this is convenient for us is the fact that a mole is a much more convenient number for us to work with uh, than a number of molecules. We can convert moles directly into things like grams and liters, which are the units we handle in class. Molecules require extra steps and we require extra uh, mathematics for us. So all I want to point out is the same logic and reasoning that allows us to say two moles or two molecules of CH4 makes two molecules of CO2. That same reasoning allows us to say two moles of CH4 allows us to create two moles of CO2. This brings us then to the main concept that goes along with stoichiometry, the part of the calculation that makes stoichiometry unique, and that is something known as the mole-to-mole -mole ratio. What this mole-to-mole -mole ratio is is simply a new conversion factor. and We're going to be able to treat it just like we've treated conversion factors all year long, and this conversion factor is made from our balanced chemical reaction. Now what this conversion factor does is it links the amount of one chemical that is used in the balanced chemical reaction to the amount of one chemical it's formed. It allows us to convert between chemicals. And that's what stoichiometry is all about. It's about figuring out how much one chemical is made based on how much of another chemical is that used. So that's what makes this conversion factor unique for us. Uh, the good news is, is making it is very, very simple. It is simply made from the coefficients of the actual balancing process. And as I already said, it is the key step in stoichiometry. All stoichiometry problems can be different, but the one thing they all have in common is they need to have a mole-to-mole -mole ratio in them. Last thing we can say then about the mole-to-mole -mole ratio is unfortunately this ratio does change from reaction to reaction. So one mole-to-mole -mole ratio that's true for one chemical reaction is not necessarily going to be true to the next. So it's only true for the reaction that you're thinking, it's, your react it's only true for the calculation that goes along with the reaction you've actually started with. So let's talk about then how to make a couple mole-to-mole -mole ratios here. We have the same chemical reaction we've been using in the last couple of steps, uh, but now we're going to use it to make this ratio. Uh, recall that when we have a blank here, that really means one. So for now, I'll write those ones actually in so we know what we're talking about. To create a mole-to-mole -mole ratio, I take the coefficients from any two 
uh, chemicals in the problem and I write them as a ratio. We can therefore say based on the two I underlined, one mole of CH4 is going to react to form one mole of CO2. And this is a legitimate mole to mole ratio that would link together the amount of CO2 that was formed based on the amount of CH4 that was started. But we can make mole to mole ratios from any pairings of chemicals. For example, I can say one mole of CH4 is equivalent to two moles of H2O. And again, taking the coefficients. I can also say for every two moles of oxygen formed, I get one mole of CO2. And for every two moles of oxygen used, I get two moles of H2O. Again, just pulling from the coefficients of the balanced chemical reaction and writing these guys as ratios. But it doesn't even stop there. This works for any pairing of chemicals. I can therefore say for every one mole of CH4 that I react, I'm going to need to react that with two moles of oxygen. And for every one mole of CO2 formed, I'm going to need to, I'm also going to form two moles of H2O. So any pairing possible is makes for a legitimate uh, mole to mole ratio. Your job is to choose which one of these is the appropriate one based on the context of the problem itself. So with all this information in mind, let's take a look at our first um, stoichiometry problem requiring just the use of a mole to mole ratio. So we have the same chemical reaction here. This chemical reaction asks us how many moles of carbon dioxide will be formed by completely reacting 10 moles of CH4. Taking time to underline things in your problem like this is not necessarily a bad idea. And then we can go back to our reaction itself and highlight to the chemicals that we're interested in. Uh, we're interested in CH4 and we're interested in the carbon dioxide. From this, we can form a mole to mole ratio. We can say that for every one mole of CH4, we're going to expect to produce one mole of CO2. And we can now use this conversion factor to convert between how much CH4 we have, the 10 moles, and how much CO2 we're going to expect to get. Um, so that's our mole to mole ratio. And again, the reason I know to use this one is because those are the chemicals that were brought up in the problem itself. If the problem talked about different chemicals, I'd make a different mole to mole ratio. Once you got all that squared away, it's time to actually start the problem. And this is going to work like any dimensional analysis problem so far. We have 10.0 moles of CH4. We'll put it in a place for our multiplication sign and a line. And then we're going to take our mole to mole ratio and plug it in. For every one mole of CH4 that we react, we'll expect to get one mole of carbon dioxide formed. We line things up so that moles of CH4 cancel out with moles of CH4. And the mathematics here obviously is very, very simple. We're going to get an answer of 10.0 moles of carbon dioxide. And now what we've done is exactly what we said we should have been able to do. We predicted the amount of CO2 formed based on the balanced chemical reaction right here and based on the amount of chemical that we actually started with. This is stoichiometry in its simplest form. Unfortunately, it is going to get more complex as we go down the road. As problems get trickier, uh, one of the things we're going to be introducing is units other than moles. Uh, when you start out with this process of figuring this out, having a document such as this one might be helpful. For example, uh, if I start your problem instead of dealing with mass, maybe our first conversion then, if we start mass here, would be to use the molar mass of our substance to get us into moles. That would then allow you to use your mole to mole ratio. And then maybe I ask for the answer instead of being in moles like the previous problem, maybe I ask the answer to be in a volume of gas that's formed. That would tell you then that we would use this conversion factor to convert from the moles answer into a particular volume of gas. If you're interested in this roadmap, in this flowchart, uh, it is available at the bottom of the page. You can pause the video, download that document, print it out if necessary, and at least for your first round of stoichiometry problems, you might find that this is a valuable tool to use. So let's wrap this up then by taking one last stab at a problem. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit more complex than the last one. It's going to be involving a different unit of grams and how we actually go about handling that. We already have our balanced chemical reaction. Uh, this pro pro uh, problem is talking about 45.71 grams of propane, and it's asking us how many moles of water would be expected to be formed. We can again highlight the chemicals we're interested in, propane and water. Create the appropriate mole to mole ratio. One mole of C3H8 is equivalent to four moles of water, H2O. And then we can start the actual problem itself. We are told that we have 45.71 grams of propane, C3, 
H8. We put in our multiplication and sign in a line, and here's where things start to get a little more complicated. We cannot use our mole to mole ratio here because the unit of grams doesn't match the unit of moles. Our first step then should be to convert the grams answer into a moles answer so we can later use our mole to mole ratio. Using my periodic table and a calculator, I am able to figure out that the C3H8 has a molar mass of 44.10 grams for every one mole of C3H8. The grams here will cancel out with the grams unit here. We now have an answer that is in moles of C3H8, which now opens the door for us to do exactly what we did in the previous problem. For every one mole of C3H8 we start with, we're gonna get four moles of H2O formed. Again, we lined it up so that moles of C3H8 cancel with moles of C3H8, and now we'll have an answer that is in moles of water, which is exactly what the question wanted. So we know that we're done with our conversion. My calculator tells me uh, that the answer to this problem ends up being 4.146 moles of H2O form. Because we started with values that had four significant digits in here and the molar mass as well, we'll round our answers to match that, and we get our unit answer here. Had the problem been more complex, it might have asked for the answer in a unit other than moles, which would, re would have required a third step here to convert to that final answer. So that brings us to the end of our video. Uh, at this stage in the game, you should be able to identify mole-to-mole -mole ratios from a balanced chemical reaction. Uh, you should be able to choose the appropriate mole-to-mole -mole ratio from your problem itself, and then able to use that mole-to-mole -mole ratio to convert between the amount of one substance to the amount of another, which is really no more than just regular old dimensional analysis. The most important part, obviously, is putting it all together, which is what's going on down here. This is the actual stoichiometry stuff. You're going to use those mole-to-mole -mole ratios uh, to convert into the unit of moles so that the mole-to-mole -mole ratio can be used and then convert your answer out of the unit of moles depending on whatever the desired unit in the problem is. As said, we definitely need to practice a whole bunch more of these. That's what we'll be doing in class time next. Uh, but for now, you should certainly be walking away with a decent understanding of how this stoichiometry process works, or at the very least, what the purpose of stoichiometry is all about.